Hi everyone, I'm Anna Prezia. I'm with the Field and Fork Program with IFAS College of Agricultural and Life Sciences and we're here at the Field and Fork Pantry and uh, today we're going to be uh, working on a soup that we're going to cook and uh, we already did our frittata and um, in both of these one of the most important things about being frugal when you cook and, and saving money when you cook is remembering that you can always use what you have in your fridge. And if you're being adaptive and intuitive with your cooking, you're gonna have things you love in your refrigerator. And so you can use those to make soups and frittatas and everything that you love. Leftovers are great. In our frittata yesterday, we used broccoli and cheese, but you can also pull out those roasted veggies you made from the night before and toss those in. If you happen to have a bag of frozen vegetables, you can get those in there. So really you can work with what you've got um, rather than having to go to the store and shop specifically for that one thing that you need. Um, it is always nice to have fresh herbs and spices and things like that in your cabinet. Those are wise investments and they'll pay off because they'll allow you to do lots of different types of recipes with the same ingredients over time. All right, so today we're gonna work on soup, and soup is another great way to um, stretch ingredients, to use what you've got in the fridge, and to cook inexpensively. And the really fun thing about soups is that you can do so many different kinds of things with soups. There's kind of three sort of categories of soup. There's the ones with the clear broth and chunky vegetables, things like chicken noodle soup that you're used to, um, possibly. Then there's the stews, things like chilies or beef stews that are really hearty and thick. Um, and then there's your pureed soups, things like, uh, like a pureed cr a bisque, like a butternut squash bisque or something like that that you may have had before. So those are sort of three categories of soup. And um, really what soups are, are a base of vegetables, some broths, and then your either fat um, or some proteins and some starches to, to build up the base of the, the, the like meal for you. And then you add in your flavoring. So your fresh, veg, your fresh herbs or your spices. And that's really where you begin to diversify the soup. So soups are really fun because they're very adaptable. And if you're like me and you don't like to measure and measuring spoons and cups are not your friends, this is great because you can just kind of dump and add at your will. So today what I'm gonna do is a Thai soup um, but I'm going to show you how you could adapt it to be lots of different soups. So the first thing you want to do, every soup pretty much starts the same way. Um, you're going to put um, some oil in a pan, maybe about a tablespoon. Again, I like to use olive oil, um, but you can use your favorite oil of any sort. Um, don't use any fancy or expensive oils. It's just a waste of money. So you just get your, you know, standard, um, you know, least expensive olive oil or your favorite oil, add it to your pan. And then we're gonna do that chopped onion. I chop the onion the same way I chop with my frittata. So you just, you know, cut your onion in half and then chop it to a small dice in these little squares. We're gonna add that to our pan. And we're gonna let that saute until it's clear. And then you can add, normally, um, if you're gonna do like a, a um, chicken noodle soup or more of an Italian soup, you would add some celery and carrot to this and that would add, it's called a mirepoix <laughs> for the fancy French word. And um, you would chop the carrots up small and the celery up small and you would add those in and you would saute those. For this soup, I'm not gonna add the celery and carrot because um, I don't really want those flavors, but I do have the onion in. I'm gonna let that cook for a few minutes until it's clear and then I will add my other ingredients. Um, Something that I learned a long time ago was that herbs and spices, as I mentioned, can make a big difference. And they're not the cheapest things, you know? So when you're frugally cooking, it's often the thing that people want to cut out of their budget or cut out of their uh, grocery list. But, you know, having that fresh herb or, or spice in your cabinet or in your refrigerator can make the difference and really tune up a recipe. So there's lots of other ways to cut corners by, like we talked about using leftovers, eating in season, adding some of those lesser expensive ingredients like beans um, or rice or other things to bulk up a recipe. Um, but if you can, don't skimp on the spices. Um, and once you've filled up your spice cabinet, you'll have them for a while as long as you store them properly. So um, you can check out IFAS Extension. They have lots of tips and tricks for storing spices and herbs um, to be able to keep them long term. And even if you buy something like this, and you know, you're not gonna use all this cilantro in one fail swoop and you don't want it to go rotten and spoiled in your fridge, but you only need it for one ingredient. You can chop it up and you can take your ice cube trays, put it in the ice cube tray, add a little bit of water, let it freeze, then pop those ice cubes in a Ziploc bag and you'll have fresh cilantro in your freezer for your next recipe. So that's a great tip 
or trick as a way to keep those fresh herbs and veggies or those fresh herbs and spices around a little longer and save yourself some money. Today, as I said, we're gonna do a Thai soup, so our onions are just about done. And now I am gonna add some of my other ingredients. I have sweet potatoes here, um, and I've already peeled and chopped them. We had these from the farm here at Field and Fork, so here's my little sweet potato. And in my adaptive cooking, I realized I didn't have a peeler. Um, and that's one of the things you realize a lot, especially if you're new to cooking. You don't have all the tools that you might think you need, but just make do. So I made do with this little paring knife and I just like cut off the peel of the sweet potato, just like that. And once I got the peel all cut off, I just chopped up my potato into bite-sized chunks. So um, those are gonna go into our soup today. And I also have some shiitake mushrooms. I love shiitake mushrooms because I love that they, the meaty flavor that they add without adding meat to my soups. So I am gonna be using shiitake mushrooms. You can also get these locally. There's a lot of our local farmers are growing um, shiitake mushrooms. So we have some shiitake mushrooms today. I'm gonna add a little of the leftover broccoli from my frittata. I didn't need it all. So I had that leftover and we're gonna use that today in our soup. Um, and then we are gonna have some garlic chives. So we're gonna chop those up, add those, and some cabbage. So that's what I had around, so that's what we're putting in our soup today. Now that my onions are getting clear, I'm, I threw, went ahead and threw in those shiitake mushrooms I was talking about, and I'm gonna add the um, sweet potatoes, and I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper. Um, salt and pepper is something that um, really changes a dish. I know um, you don't wanna add too much salt because sodium can be, you know, you don't wanna get too much sodium in your diet, but I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And um, you always wanna layer your seasoning. So you wanna season each kind of layer of a dish. So for a soup, we're gonna season it once now, and then we'll season it once we've added all of our broths. And um, one of the things you wanna do is check your broth. Um, so today we're using a, a boxed broth, and so I wanna check it to see how much salt is in it. Um, so this one, sodium, has a fair amount of sodium, 550, 560 milligrams um, per cup. So this is a pretty salty broth, so I may not, not need to add any salt when I actually start the, the soup part of this. So I've got my mushrooms, my onions, my sweet potato in here. I'm letting it kind of just cook down a little, those mushrooms cook down a little bit more before I add my broth. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my curry paste. So this is one that I say everyone should have in their cabinet. Um, this is a red curry paste. There's also green curry paste, and uh, there's also madras curry, which is a, a more Indian um, curry. And I love curry because uh, all, there's so many different kinds, and it can really change flavors of recipes quickly. So we're gonna use red curry paste today. And I'm gonna need my knife, actually, to get it out of here. And we're gonna add, usually on the side of the bottle, it'll give you some directions about how much to use. I've used it enough, this one actually doesn't. That's okay. I've used enough, I use about a tablespoon of red curry. Red curry is spicy, so you wanna remember that. <laughs> if you don't like spice, you may choose not to go with a curry. Um, but we're gonna add some coconut milk today too, and that coconut milk will help to cool off that spice a little bit. But I like to add my curry paste in, mix it in with my veggies, and kind of let it uh, cook a little bit. It kind of toasts, it kind of almost toasts the spices a little bit. And at this stage, I'm gonna add in some garlic. I don't add my garlic right at the beginning with the soup because I don't want it to burn. Um, burnt garlic has a really bitter flavor and so I'm adding it in now that the other veggies are in there and I added about a tablespoon of garlic. So it's about two cloves chopped finely. And I'll show you a trick with garlic a lot of people think they have to have those weird garlic press things. I hate those things because they take a lot to clean. So for me, I just take the clove of garlic and I press my knife on it and the skin comes loose. Pull the skin off. You can put that in your compost. And then being very careful of your fingers, just really quickly and carefully slice it real thin in one direction. And then just like we did with our onion, turn it around and you chop it the other direction. And you have almost the same dice. And if you want it even finer, you can just keep going with your dice. And it's almost as quick. And honestly, the cleanup of this is so much quicker than the cleanup of that weird device. And you don't have to have another device to buy. So quick and easy way to get fresh garlic. So we've got that gone. We've got, now we've got the potatoes. 
and the onions and the mushrooms and the garlic and this red curry it's smelling so good so one of the things that's really important to soup is acid acid brings out flavor you might have seen the show like acid salt fat heat or whatever in order that is those are key ingredients to flavor those are the things that help us to love things salt and fat and acid so all of those things are really important in soups and you can you can remember those things you'll be able to create a good soup I normally would put like white, maybe like a quarter cup of white wine in my soup, um, but many people don't have white wine just laying around their house, but they will have vinegar. So this is actually a white wine vinegar. And in this instance, I am gonna use my spoons. Um, and so what I wanna do is I'm gonna do about a tablespoon, you're gonna do a one to two ratio. So about one of vinegar to two of water. And it'll add that acid that we're talking about that's much like the wine. So if you don't want to do wine, you could do, I wouldn't do a white vinegar, but you could do an apple cider vinegar or a white wine vinegar or a red wine vinegar or a sherry vinegar, any of those would be great. And you're gonna add that to your pan and it kind of deglazes the pan. It like, if it was wine, it would pick up all the little brown bits that are on the bottom of your pan if you have any of those and also cook out the alcohol. And then um, once you've added that and you kind of stir it around, you let that cook the alcohol off if it's wine. If it's not wine, then you, you know, your vinegar. And now we're gonna add our broth and our um, coconut milk at the end. So there's lots of ingredients you can add. At this stage, instead of my paste, I mentioned I would tell you, if you didn't wanna go with a Thai sauce style, if you were wanting to do more of an Italian, instead of adding the curry paste, you might have added some Italian seasoning and some oregano or some thyme. If you wanted to go with more of an Indian soup, you could add some of that madras curry and you might put in some chickpeas at this stage or some lentils. Um, this is a great, um, when you're using beans, if you're gonna do a, a dried bean, you're gonna wanna soak and cook those beans in advance of putting them in your soup. Um, or you can use canned, um, canned beans and, and lentils. Those are just as fine. Um, and so at this, that's when you kind of doctor all the different types of ingredients you want. But no matter what, you kind of have any veggies you want, then you add the spices that take it whichever direction you want. And then, we're, today we're doing Thai, and then you add your broths. Um, vegetable broth is great. I like to use chicken broth um, with this recipe. And again, you're gonna wanna do about four parts liquid to every part vegetable you have. So in here I have about, probably about three cups of vegetables. So I'm gonna actually use almost this whole box of broth. Um, cause I would normally do, I'm sorry, I did two parts broth to every one part. So I would like do two cups of broth for every cup of vegetables. So I would do about six cups of broth normally in here. If you're doing a big pot of soup. So we're going to go ahead and put this whole thing in here. And we've got our, so this is just going to simmer like this cause it's got to cook those sweet potatoes. So we're going to turn up the heat a little bit, let it come to simmering and let that go. And then we're gonna toss in our cabbage. So with cabbage, I've already washed this. Make sure you always wash your green vegetables really, really well. Um, and then we're just gonna cut out the core. Like that, so you don't have that, you know, that hard stemmy core. And then for me, I just like to cut it long wise like this. So you have these long shreds and you can cut them as thick as you want. I don't like to have really big bites in this soup. And then you just cut them this way. And you have your little bites and we're gonna toss that in the soup and that'll wilt down in your broth and add some nice dimension to your soup. So I always like to do a, a root veg, some kind of greens, those onions, that mirepoix, and then uh, for this soup I add the mushrooms because it's a Thai soup, but you could add the beans like I said for a protein. You, in this soup you could even add tofu if you wanted. Um, that adds a nice protein to your soup. We're doing a fully vegetarian or a fully uh, vegetable based um, soup with the chicken broth today. So I won't have the tofu, but again, whatever you have in your fridge, if you had leftover chicken cause you'd roasted chicken or you bought a roasted chicken at the grocery store, you could pull that chicken off the bone and toss it in. It would taste delicious. So as soon as this is done cooking and your sweet potatoes are really nice and tender, the last step is to pour in your coconut milk. So we'll pour in that coconut milk and then um, we can garnish it with some fresh cilantro. All right, I think our soup is just about done. So 
Um, what you're going to cook your soup for about 30 minutes or until your root veggies are soft. Um, so if you're doing a potato recipe, you know, like you could throw, you could off, done that onion, carrots, and celery like I talked about. Add some thyme and then some potatoes and corn, and then add in the chicken broth or veggie broth. And then if you wanted to at the end, add some cream or some milk and you would have a chowder. Um, and then you could add clams or you could add um, meat or you could leave it vegetarian. Um, you know, you can also, you could have done the Italian style that I mentioned. So same, the carrots, the onions, the celery sauteed, add your Italian seasoning or some oregano and thyme, and then put in some tomatoes, again, your broth, and maybe some white cannellini beans and some pasta or some lentils. So you can really be super flexible with soups. Um, but no matter what, you just wanna make sure that you cook it until your root veggies, if you've got potatoes, or in my case, sweet potatoes, till they're nice and tender, um, and your greens are nice and wilted. And then if you're using canned beans or um, any kind of canned vegetables to add to your thing, you're gonna wanna add those last and not cook those quite as long or they'll get kind of mushy. Um, and once your soup is all nice and cooked, then you're gonna add whatever dairy or other type of um, like a fresh herbs that you're gonna add at the very end. So for us today, because I'm doing that Thai soup with the red curry paste, we're gonna add about a cup of coconut milk and that'll really take it up a notch. So we're gonna turn down the heat to really, really low or you can even turn the heat off at this stage. Um, if you're, and then just add in about a cup of coconut milk. So it's about half of a can. And again, you know I hate to measure. So <laughs> we, we call that about a cup and we just stir that in and you've got a beautiful, delicious Thai, whoop, Thai curry soup that you can serve to your friends and family. And if you're not going to be serving it up for a group, you have a great soup that will freeze really easily. So you can even freeze it in single servings. If you've got Tupperwares or Ziplocs, let it cool completely. And you can ladle it in single servings and stick it in your freezer. And then you can easily pop it out and warm it up for an easy dinner on the go.